Hey, what's up guys? It's Luke, Black Sheep 217 on Pokemon, the official site with the online trading card game, and also at Zoom Battle Gym on Facebook. Please friend me either of those places. I would love to get to know you and then play you a game of Pokemon or two because I really love this game and I've gotten back into it after a long while out and I just want to play and play and play. I've been playing all day and all night and um, just getting very little sleep, but that's okay. This game is so awesome and I love playing it. There's strategy, but it's fun and there's awesome characters and there's a ton of Pokemon and Pokemon are the best. I just love them. They are so fun. I remember playing way back when the base set came out and when Fossil and Jungle and Team Rocket came out. I don't have those cards anymore. I, I feel like a big idiot because I used to have an amazing collection and I, I was the kind of person to like keep everything really nice. I gave all those cards away and now huge amounts of regret. But that's okay, no big deal. I'm back in the game and we can play online. And something that I love doing is playing the theme decks. The theme decks are awesome because for someone like me, getting back into Pokemon is really hard because there are all these new releases, a lot of new powers and abilities, and I could be really, really lost. Anybody would be. But theme decks level the playing field. They make it so that, you know, even if you've been out for a long time or you're a new player, you can have a deck that's relatively balanced among the other decks that you're going to play. These aren't constructed decks where you're putting all the most powerful cards in. You're getting a pre-constructed deck that you can have, you know, some peace of mind that there are going to be some good combinations in there that'll work and that can stand up to other theme decks that you play online. And so I kind of want to go through some of those theme decks and give them a grade. I want to see, are these theme decks any good? So join me on this journey. We're going to check out some of the theme decks. We're going to talk about what's good about some of these theme decks and what isn't so good. And the first theme deck that we're going to go over is one that I've been playing a lot. It's Blazing Volcano. I did a little bit of research before I invested in my first theme deck because it took me just a little bit of time to get 500 coins online to get a theme deck and I didn't want to blow it on something that was terrible. And so I was trying to decide between a few different ones. There was the ones that featured Charizard, and I think those are really, really powerful decks. But this one really caught my eye, Blazing Volcano. It's a non-Charizard deck, but it's fire-based, and it got really good ratings, so I decided, why not? I'm gonna go with this one, and I've been playtesting it, and so far, I've been loving it. Let's go ahead and go online and check out what this deck is all about. All right, so we have Blazing Volcano here on the screen and we're gonna kind of go through the different Pokemon and see which Pokemon are sort of the better ones, what kind of trainer cards you have in there, and we're gonna talk about some of the strategy that you can use if you wanna use this deck in competitive play. So my first thoughts are, um, first of all, this deck, after playing it for a little bit, is very, very strong. I wanna say I win about two out of every three games that I've played with it, it's that good. So there's definitely something to say about having a strong win percentage. For me, that's good, because I actually just started playing this game like a week and a half ago, and winning two out of every three games with this deck, it's gotta be, not me, it's gotta be the deck, right? So. One thing I really like about this deck, just overall, is that it has many options. You have lots of lots of different cards and they give you lots of different options depending on what kind of combination of cards you get in your hand. It can be really good in the short game and decent in the middle game. I find if you take the game too long or if your game lasts too long, oftentimes there will be other decks with more powerful Pokemon that can actually overpower you if this game goes on too long. I've actually not had a whole bunch of success with really, really long games unless, you know, the person I'm playing makes a bad mistake or something. So I would say the biggest star of this deck is Entei. He's sort of the featured Pokemon in this deck. He has 130 HP and he's a basic Pokemon, so you can just stick him right out there. You don't have to evolve up to him or anything. That's amazing. Now. He has Fire Fang, which if you attach Fire Energy and Colorless Energy, 
He does 20 damage and it burns the other opponent in the active spot. You don't have to flip a coin, you don't have to do anything, he's just burned. So it's actually effectively 40 damage on that hit. And if you're lucky with coin flips, they can stay burned and accumulate even more damage. That's really good. He also has Eruption. Now, Eruption is an amazing ability. If you look at it, it does 80 damage baseline. But what happens is both players discard the top card of their deck. And if it's a basic energy card, or actually any energy card, it adds 60 more damage. So potentially, it could be 200 damage for the Eruption. That is a crazy amount. Now you can manipulate it a little bit using cards in this deck so that you're at least guaranteed like 140 damage every time. And if you can do that, you know, Entei's gonna win you a whole lot of games just by that alone. Now, we have another beefy fire Pokemon in this deck. Let's go over to him, and that's Blaziken. Blaziken is 150 HP, stage two Pokemon, and I would say he's amazing when he's on the bench. Sure, he has a fire stream, as you can see here, fire stream does 90 damage and 20 to every Pokemon on the bench. That's pretty awesome. But his fire starter ability is, I think, one of the best abilities you can have. He takes fire energy from the discard pile every turn and you can put it onto a bench Pokemon. There are so many strategies you can do with that. And you know what? The biggest limit in Pokemon is just one energy per turn, one energy per turn. And this gets over that. You can put energy onto fire Pokemon, or any Pokemon, you can put fire energy on any Pokemon with Blaziken. And so he's gonna get you powered up and ready to fight. How awesome would, would it be to have Entei on the bench, Blaziken there as well, and you're just powering Entei up or powering Blaziken himself up. Um, feeding himself for that fire stream when you really need it. That is an amazing ability. So Blaziken, very good, although he is a stage two, and so you kind of have to work up to him. Another totally amazing Pokemon is Heracross. Heracross works best when he's with Blaziken. If you can get Blaziken and Heracross together, you've got an amazing team. Now Heracross is very easy to get out. He's a basic Pokemon with 120 hit points. So another pretty beefy basic Pokemon. He's very strong. He can tackle for just one colorless energy for 20. That's all right, it's pretty good. But look at his second ability, Powerful Friends. 30 plus, let's take a look at it. If you have any stage two Pokemon on your bench and the only stage two you can ever get is Blaziken, this attack does 90 more damage. So that's 120 damage if you have Blaziken on your bench and Heracross attacking. He has phenomenal surprise power. So if you can switch him into the active spot, um, your opponent might not see this guy coming. And it only takes two energy for the powerful friend. So here, here's a thought. Here's a thought. Let's say you have Blaziken on the bench and you have somebody in the active spot. You put down Heracross, use Blaziken to throw a fire energy on him, then play a, a leaf energy, a green energy, and then switch out the Pokemon in the active spot and just nail him for 120 damage. They won't even know what hit him. That would be so amazing. I've done that before and I love that move. I'm just like, sorry, Heracross just gave you a knockout. I mean, that is how powerful he can be. And then I've had people just quit because of Heracross. Heracross has won me many a game. All right, let's continue with some of the good Pokemon in this deck, and there are quite a few good Pokemon in this deck. Here's a huge star, Mag Cargo. Mag Cargo, his ability to smooth over is good for two reasons. Check this ability out. Once during your turn, before you attack, you can search your deck for a card and put it on the top of the deck. So that means on your next turn you can draw it. It's basically like 
what do you want? If you, if you know you need a card, you can just use Smooth Over to get that card next turn. Or you can use Smooth Over and then use a drawing mechanic like um, one of the other trainers to draw that card up right away. It just gets you what you need. So if you know your deck really well, Macargo is going to be a superstar in your deck. There's only one of them in there. So, you know, use cards that can pull out Pokemon to get him if you can't get him into your hand right away because his ability is just insane. Now, what Macargo really is good for, though, is for powering Entei up. Remember that trick where Entei has Eruption. So when you flip your card off the top of your deck, if it's an energy card, he does 60 more damage. You can guarantee the basic energy card to be there with Macargo. So Macargo is just a beast with Entei. If you can get those two together, that's going to be a really scary sight for your opponent. So I'm not going to make this screen big for these two guys, Hundur and Hundoon. Um, we got their basic and we have the stage one. Hundur is actually a really nice starting Pokemon. He has a draw mechanic in his team hunt ability, not ability, but um, attack, where for colorless energy he can draw a card. Now that's okay, it's not the greatest because there's other Pokemon that can draw two cards and so forth, but if you have more than one Hundur out, they, they, they're additive. So if you have two Hundors, like one's on your bench and one's active, that's two cards. If you have three out, that's three cards. And that can be a really nice draw mechanic for you. His flare that takes, um, that just attacks for 10, it's not that great, can come in a, in a pinch. Now Hundoom also has both amazing abilities. First of all, nasty plot, wow. Search your deck for a card and put it into your hand. That's like mech cargo. You have another sort of mech cargo type ability, which I think is really cool in case you really need something and you just want to pull it out of your deck. He's going to let you do that. Um, but I find myself using attack operation even more. And this attack can take out 130 damage. The only thing that you have to do is have more cards and you get a hundred in your um, hand and you can deal 130 damage. More cards in your hand, 130 damage. That is a surprising attack. Just like uh, Heracross was, Heracross surprised people with his additive attack if you have a stage 2 Pokemon. Hundoon, not, yeah, Hundoom, yeah, that's the right one, Hundoom. <laughs> um, he can attack for 80 more damage than the base of 50 if you have more cards. Now 50 is not, nothing to sneeze at either, but 130, that's going to take out a lot of Pokemon. So this combination is really, really nice. I really like these two. And I think that rounds out the best of the Pokemon in this deck. Now let's talk about some of the so-so Pokemon. They're just like, okay, they're not the best, but they're not completely useless either. Leading off the OK Pokemon would be Torchic. Now Torchic, you need Torchic in order to get to Blaziken. So, I mean, he's sort of a must have there. He can't really attack for much. His Singe ability is dependent on a coin toss. If you can get it, it's 20 damage. But if you can't, no damage, nothing happens to the opponent. But I've actually had Singe hit a few times to burn the Pokemon, and it, it, it can be useful at that 50% hit rate. So I'm not terribly upset with Torchic. I need him in the deck so that we can get up to Blaziken. Okay, the only colorless Pokemon in the deck is Smeargle. And Smeargle, I'm not really sure why he's in this deck. I, he just seems like a throw-in. He's a basic Pokemon with 80 hit points, so he's sort of your mid-level Pokemon. He has an interesting ability, Stunning Likeness. And this gives you some nice advantages. First of all, Stunning Likeness reveals their hand, so you can see what's in your opponent's hand, which is always a very powerful ability. And then you can choose a supporter card that you find there and use it as an effect of the attack. So if you see something you like, like a lot of 
decks have cards that draw cards, you can use that to draw some more cards. It's a nice ability, but what what is it doing in this deck? I don't know. I just think he's kind of a, utili a utility Pokemon, but uh, I'm just not sure how much he fits the theme. He has some interesting things, but I don't think Smeargle has ever done anything that really has made this deck better. He just kind of he's just kind of there, and he can be there as your starting Pokemon. But even his Tail Smash is a coin flipping ability where if you get a Tails, it doesn't do anything. Shuckle here is a basic Pokemon and he's like Smeargle, he's very, very specific and he just doesn't really, he fits in in, in in sort of a minor way. Let's check this out. It says, he has an ability called Fresh Squeeze. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you can search your deck and throw away into the discard pile three basic energy cards. So Shuckle can work decently well if you have energy in the deck and you have Blaziken on the bench and you're basically using Shuckle to kind of, instead of having the energy in the deck to put it into the discard pile. So it just seems pretty convoluted to get that to work. I've gotten it to work a couple times, but it's very rare and I don't think it works very often. I often find myself just discarding Shuckle um, when I want better cards. I just sort of get rid of it. He doesn't even sit on the bench. He has Energy Drink, which is cool because it lets me attach two basic energy cards from the discard pile to the Pokemon any way I like. But that means he has to be in the active position and Shuckle is just kind of suckle in the active position. He's just not very good. Okay, and the two Pokemon that I think are really lame in this deck, I really dislike when I have them in my hand and when they're active and when they're on the bench. Um, well, not really on the bench because they, they need to be on the bench, but I don't want them to be active. And the first one is Slugma. Slugma, you have to have Slugma because Slugma evolves into Mecargo. And that in and of itself makes Slugma necessary. But the problem with him is his Stampede is not that cost effective and neither is his flamethrower. The flamethrower attack does 60 but you gotta discard an energy from him to get that to work. I'm not a really huge fan of that. Now he also takes three energy to retreat so if you want to retreat him you're gonna have to use like a switch or a card that gets people in and out not by throwing three energy away. Sometimes when he's like the only Pokemon you have and you have to stick him in the active spot he ends up just being like a meat shield for a while. And finally, the last Pokemon in this deck is Combusken. And Combusken, he's pretty terrible. He has 80 HP, so he's sort of a mid-level Pokemon. He can do 60 damage, but you have to flip a coin for that to happen. And if you don't get a heads, you get zero. He does no damage. Um, the only thing he's good for is turning into Blaziken. Um, maybe the other saving grace is he only retreats for one energy, but that's still pretty bad. I don't like Combuskin at all. He has an ability called Natural Cure, which I guess if you're using him as a meat shield in the front, he can't be paralyzed or put asleep or anything like that if you attach an energy card to him. So there's a lot of conditions for a Combuskin. He's just not a very good Pokemon. You, you wanna get rid of him as quickly as possible from Torchic to Blaziken. So as with all decks, in Blazing Volcano, you're going to have a number of trainer cards, and I've kind of put these into two tiers. I have the top trainer cards that I think are the most useful, and then I have a mid-tier that are sort of situational. And actually, I don't think there are any training, trainer cards that are just garbage in this deck. So let's talk about them. First of all, we have the, the Nest Ball, the Timer Ball, and the Pokemon Fan Club. I like all three of these cards. They don't cost a whole lot. The Timer Ball, I mean, you can flip to get um, Pokemon and you can get Tails and not get anything that's happened before. But the Nest Ball and the Pokemon Fan Club are great ways to get Pokemon out, especially, well, basic Pokemon. And so whenever you get those cards in your hand, you're gonna wanna use those to pull out the Pokemon that you need. Copycat, Kahili, Lily, uh, Professor, Kukui, Sightseer, TV Reporter, Tate, and Lisa, 
all of those trainer cards are just draw mechanics or ways to change out your hand, those are always useful. When I'm seeing my hand is depleted on anything good, I'm trying to grab some energy or trying to grab something that could be useful, I'm gonna use those cards just to cycle through my hand so that I can get something better. Guzma is in the deck. Guzma is very important because I love cards that can uh, switch and flip-flop your opponent's Pokemon from their bench to their active position. Guzma is the only card in the entire deck that allows you to do that. So Guzma is an absolute win. I wish there were actually two of those in the deck because having one, if you know you've used it already, especially if it's later in the game and you need another one to surprise the opponent, it's not there. And there's, there's no way to get cards like that out of the discard pile. So it's a problem. Uh, I wish there were two of them. So you have one, you got to use it really wisely. And then of course there's Mallow. Mallow is a really good card. Mallow allows you to search your deck for two cards and put them on top in any order. So Mallow is sort of like your Mag Cargo. If you don't have Mag Cargo, he can, this card can help you like power up Entei, get that extra damage from Entei by putting a basic energy on top. Very useful. Or if you're just in a pinch and you really need something, Mag Cargo can help you draw it. On the next turns. Starting the mid-tier trainer cards, I don't have any bottoms for this one, just the mid-tier. The mid-tier we have the big Malasada. Big Malasada is nice, it, it only gives you 20 HP back from a damaged Pokemon, but better than nothing and also cures any status effects. So if they're like, haha, you're asleep or paralyzed, you can play that card and your Pokemon will back in action. I kind of actually wish, just like, um, just like with Guzma, I wish there were two of them but I guess you only get one, so use it wisely. There's two rescue stretchers actually, and I don't think you need two rescue stretchers. You know, I'd rather have those other cards, but of course, if you really do, if, if your Entei gets thrown into the discard or something happens, it's a good way to fish out Pokemon and get them back. Switch is in there. I put Switch in the mid tier because it only switches your active Pokemon with one on your own bench. It doesn't do anything to the opponent. So it's very, very situational if you need to call in a reinforcement right away. I think being able to switch your opponent's Pokemon is, is probably a little bit better, but Switch can have its uses and can really surprise opponents as well. And lastly, the Ultra Ball. The Ultra Ball, I uh, discarding two cards to get a Pokemon is, uh, it's kind of, it's, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's, you know, a lot of times, especially with a deck like this, you're actually playing a lot of your cards out and the cards you're not playing, you want to keep for later. Like you probably have Blaziken in your hand and you don't want to discard him. You want to put Blaziken in later when, when you can evolve Torchic and Combusken. So um, the Ultra Ball can get you the Pokemon that you need. I just don't think it's the best, but it can work and it can get you what you need at, at some point. So I don't want to say it's bad, uh, but it is very, very situational. I find myself throwing away the Ultra Ball when I need to, to get other cards that I'd rather have. So my overall wishes for this deck, I wish this deck had more switch ability. That means where I could switch out opponent's Pokemon. I mean, I would give up the Ultra Ball for that. I would give up one of the Rescue Stretchers. I'd give those up for more ability to like switch Pokemon and surprise my opponent. So let's talk about strategy. I mentioned this already when I was talking about the Pokemon, but the main strategy you wanna use here is Entei with Megcargo. If you can get that up and running, you're just gonna be hitting your opponent over and over for 130 damage. That is incredible. So if you have Entei out, Macargo can basically guarantee you basic energy, either fire or green energy, leaf energy, at the top, and just hit them and hit them and hit them. That is an amazing combo, and it's not that hard to get out because Entei is a basic Pokemon, so you don't have to evol evolve him at all, and there are plenty of cards that let you find him 
or find Macargo in your deck. So if that's the way you want to go, Entei and Macargo is a great way to just completely destroy your opponent very, very quickly. And I mentioned this with the Pokemon already, but if you have Blaziken and Heracross together, you can have Blaziken on your bench just using Firestarter to power up people on your bench. Heracross can be your active Pokemon dealing his base damage with more on top of that for 120 damage for just two energy. That is incredible. So that's a, a huge strategy that I would use. Very, again, pretty easy, not as easy as the last one because you have a stage two here with Blaziken, but Heracross is just the basic Pokemon. So you can always have him out right when you get him and then he's easy to power up and Blaziken can, can power him up as well. So, you know, and once he dies, if Blaziken's powered up, you can put Blaziken in and then Blaziken's doing 90 damage a turn. That's pretty powerful stuff. The other strategy and the final strategy that can really win you the game pretty quickly is when you have the um, Hondur Hundoom combination, the two dogs. You know, they can grab you more cards when it's Hundur and then Hundoom, if you have tons and tons of cards in your hand and you have the ability, you just have to make sure you have more cards than your opponent, um, he can do like 130 damage every single time. That is incredible. So overall, this deck, what you have to do is you just have to play very, very situationally. You have to know what your opponent's doing and you have to know what to do with your cards. So, you know, if it's me, I'm either trying to put the Blaziken combo together or I'm trying to put Entei and Mag Cargo, or maybe the Hun Hundur Hundoom combo because you can kind of find these combos and you can start with them with the cards you have that you draw at the beginning. So this deck's strength is it can really react well to other decks. There are so many combinations as long as you know what those combinations are. I mean, the worst thing you could do is probably have Hundoom out and then Heracross out without Blaziken and without a lot of cards in your hand and you're just going to be screwed. You just have to know what those abilities are and take advantage because their advantages in this deck are absolutely ridiculous. They can hit for a ton of damage for not a lot of energy and you can really surprise your opponent with this deck. So all in all, I think um, Blazing Volcano is a stunningly good deck in the hands of a good player. You should give it a shot. Give some of the cards a try. I think you'll really enjoy the combos that you can build out of this deck. There are, you can find yourself to win many situations with the cards within this deck. They are powerful, especially in the early to mid game. This is when you want to win your game and it can carry you to the late game. And if you're in the late game with this deck, it's not impossible to win, but like I said, it doesn't hit as hard in the late game. So just do your best to like try to win as early as you can, especially against those Charizard decks. Those decks are, are fast. And actually that's one of the weaknesses of this deck. You know, sometimes it can take a little bit of time to get going. It's a bit slower than some of those Charizard decks because those Charizard decks just draw and draw and draw. And so you're just sitting there and they have a ton of cards. So that can be a weakness. So you're trying to win in that earlier or mid game time frame. That's the best. So what grade would I give it? I would give this deck an A, straight up an A. It is extremely versatile, very strong with very good Pokemon. Not a lot of fluff in this deck. So, you know, most of the cards I would say are strong and they all can have a good purpose. You're not gonna draw a card and just be like, why is this card in the deck? Most of the cards are very, very good. And then the other cards are more situational. But I think the good folks over at Pokemon have made a deck that is very competitive. And I think if you get to know this deck well, you can win a whole lot with it. So give Blazing Volcano a try. Let me know what you think of Blazing Volcano. Use the combinations that I've talked about to help you win some Pokemon games. Thanks for watching, and like I said, friend me on online at BlackSheep217. 
and join uh, me on Facebook at Zoom Battle Gym. And then we can hang out, we can be over there, we can do all sorts of stuff. Thanks for watching again. I will see you next time.